So recently, I just returned from a quick weekend trip up to the beautiful Toronto, Ontario area. And while I was up there, I was capturing a bunch of photos and videos, and I wanted to pack light, so I didn't want to bring my 15-inch MacBook Pro, and instead, I brought my much lower spec 13-inch MacBook Air, with the idea that I'd be editing all my photos and videos once I actually got back. You see, I capture all my photos in RAW, and I capture all my video in 4K. And as you guys may know, those are very heavy files to actually work on a lower spec machine like this entry-level 13-inch MacBook Air. But then I started thinking to myself, is it possible to edit 4K video on this super low-end MacBook Air? In today's video, we're going to find out. Alright, so let's go ahead and jump into our MacBook Air. I've actually literally never done this, so I don't exactly know how it's going to result. So, uh, yeah, we're both finding out together here. So just really quickly to show you guys the specifications of my MacBook Air, we've got a uh, 1.6 gigahertz core i5 processor, which only has two cores, as you guys can probably see here. We've got Intel UHD Graphics 617, and then the only upgrade that I did do to the system is the 16 gigabytes of DDR3 memory. Now we're gonna go ahead and load up this project. Now this isn't footage from my Toronto trip, because I'm gonna be saving that for a future video, uh, but what we do have is some uh, 4K 10-bit uh, 4K 24 frames per second footage that we're going to be testing this out with, which is some pretty hefty stuff. Now I didn't really do much of an edit to the footage, I just put it in a timeline with the simple title to give it something to do. And as you can see, it's just going ahead and rendering things out. So once this is actually done, we're gonna do a final render of the actual footage and see how fast it goes. All right, so now that we got our video pre-rendered out, let's go ahead and render out this video and see how long exactly it's gonna take. All right, so rendering out that one minute 4K video only took us about one minute and 17 seconds. But I'm used to editing short clips much, much faster. And hey, it wouldn't be a Franklin Reed video without, of course, an eGPU. So let's go ahead and try it out with this guy. I don't know if you guys remember this. This is the Sonnet eGPU breakaway box. Inside of it has an RX 570 4 gigabyte edition. And we're gonna see if we hook this up to our 13 inch MacBook Air, if this will make it render any faster. All right, so once again, we've completed our pre-render and now let's go ahead and test how fast it goes with our eGPU. Wow, there you go. We saved an entire 15 seconds when using our eGPU paired up with our MacBook Air. And just for reference, the same project rendered in about 20 seconds on my eight core Vega 20 MacBook Pro. Six core Mac mini, might need to investigate this a little bit further, so subscribe down below to make sure you don't miss out on that video. But what about editing 4K footage in an application like Premiere Pro on the 13 inch MacBook Air? Well, unfortunately, when doing something as simple as scrubbing through the timeline in Premiere Pro, the MacBook Air just performed horribly with and without an eGPU. So is it possible to edit a super high-end 4K video on a super low-end 13 inch MacBook Air. Well, you guys have seen the results for yourself. Yes, it is possible depending on the application. If using an application like Final Cut Pro and presumably DaVinci Resolve, which both do pre-rendering, it should make it pretty simple and easy for you to scrub through a 4K timeline, even on a super low-end machine like this MacBook Air. But if you're using a more high-end application like Adobe Premiere Pro, it doesn't matter if you do use an eGPU or don't use an eGPU, it's going to have a really bad time. Now, does adding an eGPU to your MacBook Air make it any faster when it comes to video editing. I will say, yes, it does. As you guys saw, we saved an entire 15 seconds. Now, while that might not seem like a lot uh, on a lower end edit like this, when it gets much longer and much higher, you can save up to a minute, maybe five minutes, and, and that can save you a whole lot of time over the course of the lifespan of this machine. Now, while I do give the MacBook Air my eGPU stamp of approval, nothing beat out the blazing fast speeds of my eight core Vega 20 MacBook Pro 15 inch. That thing is just stupid fast. It even beat out the performance of my six core Mac mini, hooked up to an eGPU. But I guess you can say if I learned anything from this experiment is next time I'm definitely going to bring my 15 inch MacBook Pro. And that is going to wrap it up for this video. As always, if you guys have any questions about my MacBook Air, my MacBook Pro, my Mac mini, anything technical at all, do me a favor, leave it down in the comment section below. Also, while you guys are down there, if you like this video, hit the like button. And if you aren't already subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing. Once again, guys, my name is Fran. Thanks for checking out this video. I'll see you guys in my next one.